So here we have a graph and here we have a clock. And what I'd really like to consider is the motion of the end of the second hand. So this top part here of the second hand, which is moving round. And what I'd really like to look at is its motion in respect to the y direction. So what I'm going to say is that horizontally we've got the x direction and vertically we've got the y direction. And effectively, if the second hand is at the 3 or the 9, its position is going to be in the y direction, 0. And what we're going to look at is um, its maybe displacement s and how that is affected with the time which is going to go along here. And what I'd like to do is just look at its time over one minute. So here it's got a displacement of 0. Um, after, when it gets to the 10 o'clock position, it's here. When it gets to 11, it's about here. Uh, five seconds later, when it gets to 12, it's going to be here. And I'm just going to do that for the whole minute. OK, so here we have the position of the end of that second hand over the course of one minute. And in that time, this went through 360 degrees. And if we think about uh, actually maybe what's more useful sometimes when it comes to physics, we can also think about this angle in radians. And 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. And actually there's a big link between things which move in a circular path and things which move with this regular kind of oscillation. And in this case, what we can actually get here is a lovely sine curve. And actually what we can do is just like we have things moving in a circular uh, path and how we can consider that in terms of degrees, we can also map out a wavelength perhaps for something which is oscillating in terms of degrees or radians as well. And in fact, one complete wave cycle is the same as 360 degrees or indeed 2 pi radians. And this is really important when it comes to looking at things like phase and phase difference. Now here is a wave made out of jelly babies and again one complete wave cycle is equal to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians and that means that these two jelly babies here because they're one wavelength apart uh, and again this is just one wave we're looking at they're one wavelength apart which means that there's no phase difference between them because as this one goes up this one also goes up and down at the same time and the same with the two yellow ones and the two green ones and things which are in phase are 360 degrees apart or 2 pi radians but these two things here half a wavelength between them and that means that they are out of phase as this one here is moving up this one here would be moving down and in actual fact, the phase difference for something half a wavelength apart is equal to 180 degrees. Or if you've got something like this, it's going to be 90 degrees. And that's the phase difference between parts or consecutive parts on the same wave. So on a single wave, these two points here are in phase. This one and this one are out of phase because they're exactly 180 degrees uh, apart. So there's a phase difference of 180 degrees. And if you maybe have something like this one here, uh, you know, which sort of fits in somewhere, then maybe this one and this one would then be out of phase. Uh, so as this one is going up, that might be going down or going up, depending on where it is in the wave cycle. So that's a little bit about phase difference on one wave. We can also use phase difference to look at one wave compared to another. And I've tried to draw these sort of freehand to be that uh, they're coherent, which means there's a constant phase difference between them. And there's a big link between how much things are in phase or out of phase and the wavelength of it. Now what we can see here is that when this one is up, that one's down, and when that's up, that's down, and so on. And in actual fact, these things here are half a wavelength apart. If we were to shift this whole thing along by half a wavelength, we'd find that the two things are then perfectly in phase, which means they'd have a phase difference of 0 degrees, or 0 radians, or indeed 360 degrees, 2 pi radians, and so on. As it is though, they're out of phase by half a wavelength, and that means they're going to be equal to pi radians out of phase, or indeed 180 degrees out of phase, which is therefore in antiphase. So um, it's quite straightforward to calculate the phase difference if you know the wavelength, uh, and it's just linking the fact that one complete wave is equivalent to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So I hope that explains just a little bit more about this. I've now got a whole bag of jelly babies to eat, so uh, good luck and any questions that you've got about this.